Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to um, the Wasani Wanajisot webinar. Um, and let me also um, again welcome you all on behalf of the partners, uh, that is uh, UNESCO, the Creative Economy Working Group, um, Alliance Francais, um, UNESCO, the Go Down Art Center, and Toyza Communications. My name is Kimani Njogu. The idea of the Wasani Wanajisot webinar is really a consequence of um, conversations that we have had under Isili Arts um, Kenya. Uh, and those conversations were held on May 21st, June 25th, and July 30th. There were also additional um, conversations that were internal, uh, organized by the Creative Economy Working Group, um, that really indicated there is a need for continued development uh, of the sector, of the creative sector, not just in Kenya, but um, across Africa. Um, as a result of Brazilian art um, convenings, a number of recommendations uh, came out. And I'll just want to highlight a few of those recommendations before we begin um, uh, uh, the, the, the development. Um, the first recommendation that was uh, uh, came out of the conversations was the need to continue reviewing the Sports Act and Social Development Act um, and its regulations and guidelines, because currently those guidelines are skewed too heavily towards sports and the creative sector feels that they are not uh, catered for by the, um, by the fund. And therefore, uh, in meetings that we have had with the fund, um, again, as partners, uh, we have articulated the need for that revision. And I think that in the case of Kenya, there is need to really follow up uh, with, the, um, with the leadership of the fund to make sure that uh, the Sports Act, uh, Social Development Fund regulations and guidelines are, um, are revised uh, to support the sector even more pointedly. The other recommendation, which was again emphasized through the Resilient at uh, Kenya uh, uh, meetings, was the need to really prioritize the policy frameworks to support the creative sector uh, in terms of um, the culture and arts uh, policy, the music policy, all those other critical uh, documents that are supposed to support uh, the environment in which the creative sector uh, works. Uh, with regard to digital platforms, um, a, a very strong recommendation came out, and that is that uh, there is need to consider these platforms as public good um, and really to open them up completely uh, so that they are used by creators to uh, distribute their products without feeling that they are under too much um, censorship and constraints and that they are also accessible and affordable. Um, and that means that the various technology companies need to step in and support the creative sector through affordability and accessibility uh, mechanisms. Um, an issue of data and statistics was again underlined during the Resilient Arts Kenya uh, meetings uh, because again, without data and without um, the uh, research, it's very difficult for us to plan and budget uh, and really uh, nurture the growth of the, of the sector. And therefore, um, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics and the various partners were asked to uh, support the collection of uh, data and statistics uh, from, the, from the sector. And the sector is ready to provide uh, support uh, so that um, uh, this data um, is, is, is available. Uh, another issue um, that again was emphasized and um, recommended was really to build mechanisms for the payment of royalties for creators. Uh, because in any case, uh, creators receive on their percentage uh, from, their, from their creativity. And yet even that getting that percentage um, it's, it's, it is very slow, sometimes very unpredictable, and those that those are that are supposed to pay do not do so 
in good time. And therefore, there is need to continue uh, strengthening uh, those mechanisms for the uh, payment of royalties and all the deals that uh, the creative sector uh, is entitled to. Uh, so those are some of the recommendations that came out of the Resili Arts Kenya. Um, and um, um, to start implementing uh, some of those recommendations, uh, the partners um, uh, came up with the uh, Wasani Nagisot series. And we will be doing this series throughout uh, the remainder of this year. And the first um, conversation is on copyright. And I'd like now to hand you over to our colleague, Kathy Mujomba, who will moderate uh, this, this meeting and really invite her and Liz Lenjo to run us through uh, the remainder of, the, of, the, of, of this webinar. Uh, Kathy, welcome. And I think you're on mute. All right, thank you, Professor Asante Sala. I think it was a very comprehensive summary on the recommendations so that at least as artists, we're also very comfortable knowing that things are moving ahead. Sometimes as artists, we're asked, um, is anything being done? And we're very quick to say no, but uh, thank you for that, Professor. And uh, I would like to now introduce Liz to say something. Now, Liz is a, an advocate uh, in uh, IP and uh, she's a fellow teacher in a course that we are running. And she's an artist as well, which I think uh, not many people know. So, Karibu uh, Sana, Liz. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, as Kathy said, I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. I practice under the style of my clinical studio. So my farm is, um, uh, we specialize basically in intellectual property, entertainment, media, and fashion law. So we are lawyers of the creative economy and we really believe in the potential we have. Um, we've been privileged to negotiate some interesting commercial ventures for artists. Mm -hmm. So with that kind of background, um, we'll be able to shape some of the emerging conversations around copyright in Kenya. Thank you. So now you know that uh, as artists, sometimes we get very frustrated when we discover that our creative work has either been stolen or uh, copied or misused, vandalized, you know, we are very unhappy about the way our artwork has been handled. And sometimes we feel very disadvantaged about that. And I think that's why the importance of copyright is there because it is the one that uh, creates a certain environment for us to, to thrive. So today we will be discussing copyright from a case study perspective. So I want to thank the professor for taking us through the policies and you know the, the groundwork, the recommendations for the policies, but today is only about case studies. What are we as artists on the ground feeling? What are we as artists on the ground saying, experiencing? And then Liz, who will be our expert for the day, will try and guide us through so that copyright is no longer um, this thing out there, which we don't quite understand. So Karibuni Sana. So I go straight into it. And I'd like to um, introduce the first case study. We hope that the recommendations that we have here today will help. It's from one person, but different people will be able to benefit from that. And so Joan, thank you very much, Joan, for writing in. And her question is, which digital techniques can you employ to protect your content within the digital space against online uh, piracy or copy? Are there codes or something that you can embed into your content that alert you whenever your content is stolen or sites that can help you get this information? Liz, what do you think? So this is one of those areas uh, in copyright we're really struggling with, not only nationally, but internationally. Right. And, and because again, the innovations around the internet space are very robust, mm -hmm. they're always changing with time. Correct. So when we just think we found a solution, then we realize, oh my gosh, we figured out how to PDF uh, or you know, sort of package a document and mm -hmm. it can't be interfered with, and then some genius software developer comes through and has created something. So we find we're always grappling with that. Um, so that has been the greatest challenge, but yes, you keep trying to do that 
put your watermarks in your images because again mm-hmm. under the copyright act if mm-hmm. someone interferes with that kind of information it is uh, it constitutes a, a crime under the copyright act or something uh, illegal mm-hmm. uh, it means tampering with digital rights management information the words and our copyright act so mm-hmm. you know you would find someone uh, guilty for copyright infringement as well as tampering so mm-hmm. certain offenses under the act so you know that such small um, things assist you know if you can figure out also how to ensure you always have your metadata around your creativity online it also helps because with the metadata you find that anyone who's infringing they never stop to think about the metadata so mm-hmm. when you're trying to figure it out or getting your team to look at your work online mm-hmm. just by that small tag you'll be able able to see who else has reproduced your work and then you can be able to trace them mm-hmm. but in the meantime we're still trying to see even at, the, at an international level what else can be done but it will be something that we'll continue to struggle with because of that uh, dynamism around the internet mm-hmm. right and then if, when, when i do find somebody has done something you know has infringed because infringing is actually taking and using my work without my permission or well, what can i do so that is immediately uh, you first look for a lawyer Uh, mm-hmm. we have had this thing where we feel like the social media is a court of justice mm-hmm. so then what we end up doing as as we you know put our issues online Mm-hmm. you're destroying the kind of strategy that your lawyer would have because now you start putting all your cards on the table even some of the things the lawyer thought oh i have a gold card mm-hmm. and then boom you're putting it everywhere on twitter mm-hmm. or facebook mm-hmm. so don't do that mm-hmm. the minute you do that you just even destroy the goodwill because mm-hmm. in law we have something called goodwill mm-hmm. um that will also bring the other party to the to the negotiating table and they will be able to say okay you know what we, we did that mistake we are slapping ourselves in the wrist what do you want how do we negotiate you know right. the minute you put it on social media the goodwill also so goes so mm-hmm. the other party will now even use it against you uh in some instances now it will you know resolve it to another area of law it might be an issue of defamation so even maybe it, it might be true but then you go ahead and you know use unkind words or uh, derogatory terms and things like that then it just swells into something else right okay. so it's always important to look for a lawyer yes. um and then now your lawyer start even with a local lawyer because like what we would do is we'll go online and investigate the content mm-hmm. we see if we can find this person so mm-hmm. we do all the due diligence on your behalf mm-hmm. uh if they're in a foreign country we'll be able to, to talk to our partners our right. of counsel as well and say oh this happened in america you stayed right. in atlanta mm-hmm. or you know in atlanta georgia so we, we find counsel there and say okay we have a problem here Uh, mm-hmm. how can we work together negotiate something on your behalf and then they're able to pursue that on on our behalf in that other country you've brought up something very interesting because now we are talking about cross border yes. meaning that i'm in kenya my my work was brought down or was copied infringed upon in uh, another country and then now it how explain that process again a bit more clearly mm-hmm. for us what, what what exactly is happening Okay. So my work, let's say that's say it's your work. Yes, my work. Your work mm-hmm. is online. Mm-hmm. Uh you had put it like maybe on your website. Yes. Then Liz who is based in Canada or whatever mm-hmm. decides to take it and replicate on another platform, right? right? Then you get you get to discover that and uh-huh. you go to the content to find it actually your content. So I'm excited that some of them don't even remove your name mm-hmm. there, but mm-hmm. it's been reproduced. And right. the copyright act to have the exclusive right to reproduce as the author. Yes. this person by them putting it on another website has been they have reproduced That's so right. it is copyright infringement yes so in that respect then don't go online and start yelling about it mm-hmm. for a lawyer call mm-hmm. so and so and say hi i had your copyright lawyer this is my problem mm-hmm. here is the link how can we work mm-hmm. together and they say okay we're investigating right. so immediately now we go right. online we look through and see and say oh yeah by the way it's true mm-hmm. it's copyright infringement mm-hmm. you know on my end as a lawyer i would be able to even just go and compare our copyright act to the canadian copyright act and figure out how we on the same page and I say hey i think you have a case in canada yes let me start looking at a canadian lawyer mm-hmm. who can work together with you and see how we can help so you you just take your back seat as the lawyer i am i am initiating the process uh-huh. i'm negotiating for you uh, we are also having that interaction I'm trying to figure out what kind of you know what kind what kind of amount we would be negotiating for you because remember again cross border there's the Kenyan rate there's the the Canadian rate so it's all about also negotiating mm-hmm. you know remember that with the creative space as well uh, we don't tend to do well with, with fights with even litigation on and all that stuff it interferes with your creative process you know half the time now Kathy will be sulky she's just mm-hmm. oh, fighting and she's not creating so she's not making any more money you're stuck in this place right so the lawyer will be able to do that for you mm-hmm. uh, and we negotiate 
you get a settlement, a settlement agreement is signed, you find some of these settlement agreements as well, we have confidentiality clauses. Okay. So we've had a, quite a number of cases that have been settled, but they will always be bound by confidentiality. So you will never hear the artist who had a breakthrough yelling about it because they signed an agreement. Right, yeah. right. There's something that uh, we talk about, take down notice. So somebody has infringed on my work, I write to the platform concerned and I give them a take down notice. What is that? So basically, especially with the social media platforms, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, mm -hmm. I'm not sure about TikTok because I don't use TikTok, but at least these main platforms, yes. uh, at the terms and conditions, they provide for takedown notices, which is a copyright mechanism mm -hmm. that allows an author or an owner of a work mm -hmm. to basically report uh, a copyright infringer to the said platform and send a message and say, hey, uh, I've seen this page mm -hmm. infringing on my copyright, mm -hmm. take it down. Uh -huh. Right. So you'll find that some of them will have direct copyright takedowns or some will have um, a warning mechanism. So this infringed the first time, mm -hmm. they will poke me, they will send me a message and say, uh, the content you have used is infringing on someone else's oh. copyright, take it down. Mm -hmm. Strike one. Yes. Strike two. Strike three, I do it again. I'm out. They take, they even remove my, my Facebook page or my YouTube oh. page and I'm out. Yeah. So some of them will have like a strike. Mm -hmm. Others will, might just be outright. They will decide to remove everything right. and then maybe now you can plead your case through the, the community guidelines and mechanisms and say no it was only one picture and state my page or whatever that's it is right. but you you know that's what you, that's what talk, you know take down notices do for an author or that's great owner. Yeah, thank you now um i know we started a bit backwards but it's just so that we can understand what the the program will actually be doing for us but uh, maybe you could tell us liz what is copyright then i'm an artist which pieces of mine are copyrightable? Because you know, I, 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 the way we are, we're assuming that everybody knows what can be, what can gain copyright, what cannot. And then also, uh, what does it take? How do I get copyright? Mm -hmm. Yes. So first of all, what is copyright? Mm -hmm. So copyright falls under the bigger umbrella of intellectual property law. Right. Um, and we'll start with the common phrase we like to hear. I want to patent an idea. Hey, my problem. <laughs> we don't patent ideas. <laughs> IP well, law helps you well. to protect the idea that you, the expression, let's say the expression of the idea loosely. Yes. So it's, it's, it's you coming to an mm -hmm. and a lawyer and say, oh, I have a, an invention that does this, you know, maybe if it has mechanical elements yes. and whatnot, then in that regard, if it's mechanical, it's a scientific, we're talking about a patent. Yes. And again, the patent will now. Uh, interrogate. Exactly. Is it novel and new? If not, if maybe not exactly it's what a new improvement. Doing. It's a right. new improvement. We also have what we call a petty patent That's or a right. utility model. That's right. So we don't patent ideas. Yes. Uh, uh, and patenting is the highest form of protection. So mm -hmm. that means you have to be the only one in the whole world to have come up with it. So as an artist, you did not come up with the idea of painting a brush, right. writing a script, right. you know, all that, you didn't come up with that. Right. So that becomes very difficult to talk about patents. Mm -hmm. So, and that's how you also tell when someone is misleading, yes. they yes. tell you, you're, you're patenting an idea, you're not. Mm -hmm. So copyright for us in the artistic space is what we get to use predominantly for protection. Because now copyright protects the expression of ideas, um, so not the idea itself. Right. So remember in copyright, we're talking about artistic works literary works and software as well, which are like found short. Okay. So, but uh, when you look at artistic works, uh, literary works, they are very related to each other, even in the subset. So if, if it's artistic work, it's um, a painting, okay. um, a sculpture. So if you do a painting of a giraffe, mm -hmm. and then you do a sculpture of a giraffe, mm -hmm. you have your copyright, I have my copyright. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about how I did it, mm -hmm. how I expressed it. We can also both do the paintings of giraffes exactly. in totally different ways. Totally different, different ways. Right. Uh, okay. And even, even if you just sat down and observed a giraffe right now, mm -hmm. and we both painted it to a T, mm -hmm. you have copyright to yours, I have copyright to mine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we always need to understand uh, regarding copyright, the expression. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're talking about um, literary works, we're mm -hmm. talking about novels, we're talking about stories, we're talking about poetry, mm -hmm. we're talking about the plays, the scripts mm -hmm. of all these plays, um, textbooks mm -hmm. are also included, speeches are also included, uh, letters can also be protected and a copyright. So anything, anything literature wise is and our copyright. Anything that I'm writing. Yeah, anything that you're writing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, and what you're protecting is the expression 
mm-hmm. not the concept because that's the other thing people imagine that mm-hmm. I have come up with a concept mm-hmm. I am I am protecting a concept no we're not protecting concepts it's, it needs to come very clear right. because you know we hear uh, like one time there was a case um, where someone came up with this idea of uh, I think chamas having a show mm-hmm. and they would have I think like some sort of competition and whatnot. So it was just a concept, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't an idea that is sufficiently mm-hmm. developed because that's also what copyright looks at. Mm-hmm. Like, have you sufficiently developed something mm-hmm. such that if I was to borrow or copy it, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, they would say, hey, this is Kathy's work. You know, mm-hmm. there would be somewhere they would go to and say, mm-hmm. hey, by the way, paragraph five, six, seven, eight, and 32 and that's right. right. That's that's right. right. It belongs to yeah. So it has to be sufficiently developed okay. to qualify right. for copyright, which is something that we really need to understand and process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So let us go now to the second question. I know we are, we're, we're being a bit, um, I, please do send in your, your questions because um, we're still open. I can see there are some people who are, um, giving us some good information. So thank you very much for that. Let me go to the, the second question. Now, there's someone, Lean, has written in and said, I have a book and shared my story and included my psychological experiences so that the process of going through the book, one is able to process their grief. So I think she, she, she wrote a book, she shared some of her personal experiences in it. And of course it has, because she's a psychologist, I suppose, because it says it has some psychological expertise. So she's created this book. And she's asking, how and what can I copyright in the book? What is the process for copywriting the book? Okay, so let's start with first the process of copywriting. Mm-hmm. So with copyright, it's inherent, it's automatic. Mm-hmm. The minute I write it down, I automatically have uh, the copyright. Or the minute I'm able to, to record it or you know, put it into some sort of tangible format. Right. Now, right. the challenge has been because, remember, we're talking about expression of ideas. Yes. Here you can express the same idea in an almost similar fashion. Right? Correct. Correct. So because over the years we've been having uh, you know, those kind of challenges, uh, there will be lack of access, but then you will come and say, oh, but at least you will pinch on my copy. And, and I never knew your work existed, yes. you know, and there's some minor stuff, you know, there's some stuff that qualified for, for, for as concepts. Right. Um, so because of, of that kind of issue, you know, people in the same, in the film industry were, were likely to do the same kind of work. Mm-hmm. Again, we're also ex- exchanging ideas mm-hmm. uh, behind the scenes and things like that. So you'll find people are always fighting each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually mm-hmm. internationally, they, have, they had a conversation about registration of now copyright works mm-hmm. to curb this challenge. Right. So we then since moved towards uh, uh, the registration. Now in Kenya, it's not mandatory under, under our Copyright Act, mm-hmm. but it's prudent, which means mm-hmm. that at least once you've created it, it's great that you go and, and register. So, so let, me, let me get this right. When I create my work, I don't have to register it with anybody. I automatically get that copyright. That's yes. what we're saying. Yes, that's what okay. we're saying. Okay. But it's important okay. now you register it mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of any future uh, engagements you're likely to have either contractually mm-hmm. or even just verbally even with your friends. You know, uh-huh. I could sit down and get excited. We're having drinks. And I said, oh, Kathy, I have this amazing project. And she said, oh, Kathy there with her money. She's like, hmm. <laughs> she doesn't know anything. <laughs> so, you know, if you do that, I'm yes. able to read to who can pick out my copyright certificate and say, hey, my friend, in 2012, I registered. Here is even a script, you know? And maybe if I'm lucky, I even have that receipt where we're having drinks. And I tell you, remember, because it was on this (laughs) day. You know, so that is why that registration is important. Because again, it's like when you buy a shamba, you get a certificate or your title deed to say you're the owner. So it's the same thing with copyright. You want to do that, right? And you always read it when it's in its lowest form. Mm -hmm. Because artists sometimes are like, oh, it's not perfect. Yes, it's it's not not ready. It does. And you have a few more tweaks. You know, Uh Uh you do it when it's even raw. You can do part two, part Mm -hmm. three, still rich register and it's an okay. affordable process okay. because now copyright is under Kenya Copyright Board right. and they're online copyright.go.ke mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you'll see a link to now their new portal mm-hmm. I think it's called an nrr.copyright.something Correct. so you go on or just yeah. online and you create an account mm-hmm. and you're able to choose I know I am an author so I do literary works I put all my scripts there so even if tomorrow I change yes. I plan to uh, just re-register and then I'll get a subsequent certificate right. for the, now the new amendments and the new changes. Mm-hmm. So you can keep it current. So you do that first. Now in her instance, what mm-hmm. can she copyright? 
the expression. So even the way she would express her expertise mm -hmm. would be different from how another psychologist would express their expertise. Mm -hmm. It's very contextual to her book mm -hmm. as well. So all those, all her story itself, the way she's expressed it, and especially when there's very unique elements, mm -hmm. it's how you her also, personal story, her personal story, story you know, she and, talked and, about and how she's talking about her personal story. Mm -hmm. She wants to make sure that it's very distinct that, you know, if anyone else tried to uh, share a similar experience, mm -hmm. they would have to be very uh, unique and different right. so that then they can coexist or she can prove some sort of copyright infringement right. by someone copying from her book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, that registration is always important. Okay. Now, when I go to Kikobo, because you've said we go to Kikobo, we're going to register this. What, what, what am I doing? So, so I get there. Mm -hmm. So you go online. Now it's an yes. online process. Online. Yeah, no online. So I'm not even going physically. Yeah, going to the online. And this online means that it doesn't matter where you are in Kenya, exactly. you can access it. So yes. now registration anyway, is Anywhere in Kenya, open. even if you're abroad, you have And you're a Kenyan. Yeah, even, even, even foreigners. Even foreigners are able to copyright their, their work and they're in, because they're in Kenya or, or because they're like, abroad? Yeah, I don't like to work, work here. So, uh, uh -huh. So we remember intellectual property generally, mm -hmm. not just copyright itself, but yes. patents, trademarks, they're all territorial, right. Right? right? So you protect based on the countries of interest, commercial uh -huh. interest. So if I know, like, for example, I am uh, a painter mm -hmm. and I'm going to take some work, I don't know, to the US, right? I want to protect it before, beforehand, yes. right? Yes. I register uh, the, the copyright through USPTO. I get my certificate. USPTO, the US what? Patent uh, and Trademark Office, and I think that's the okay. Office as okay. a branch, I think. Okay. But Thank they are you, basically a similar office there. Right. Then you register because you want, mm -hmm. when you take your work to that country, to the US, right. you already have some sort of recognition. Mm -hmm. So if anyone did anything, you'd be able to say, oh, you know what, actually, he's even recognized uh, in our database and he's an author and he has basis. So you, over there, maybe it's a hotel, mm -hmm. you'll be able to, to, to you know, ask them to assist you right. with such issues. Right. So, you know, it's about the countries of, of uh, commercialization, which is very important. Protect where you're going to be present or where your work will be present. Will be present. Yes. Okay. So now I'm a, a visual artist, for example, or even a musician. I create um, seven pieces a day, if that is possible. Am I... How, how do I, does it mean every song has its own, has it, how do I put a series of work in, you know, how do I copyright that? Otherwise, I have my time instead of producing work, I will be copywriting work. You can do them as collections as well. Uh -huh. So you put them in a folder. Mm -hmm. um, so when you go onto the website, right. you are able to upload different formats. You tell you the kind of formats that are possible. Correct. So you find that, you know, like for example, a PDF is easier. Mm -hmm. So then you can have your images. Page mm -hmm. one is the first image, page two, like that, like that. Mm -hmm. Then you can you give it a name as well because the certificate needs to come in a, with a name. It so is. depending on where you are, your creative space, you, I don't know, you just come up with an interesting name. So for for example, Leah, who is asking about a book, how does she, the book, is she puts the whole book up? Or yeah, she, she, so, has to put the yeah, she puts the whole book up, especially mm -hmm. because you see after after she's created it, she's likely to engage a publisher, yes, right? Yes, indeed. Um, in that process of engaging a publisher is mm -hmm. quite interesting because right. it means you're taking your manuscript mm -hmm. uh, and there'll be changes and all that. So you always want to have a reference point to the original. That is true. Because the publisher again will might come and say, I have done too much, now mm -hmm. it's mine. Oh, what okay. is it? So you okay. want to always say, you know, I have a copyright, a document here it is. Mm -hmm. Now we see even in this space of uh, the publishing sector as well, mm -hmm. the other things you need to take care of. Because right. remember you're engaging with powerful businesses. Mm -hmm. They have the financial mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. So you want to protect yourself. So as, 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 as soon as you register the copyright, it doesn't stop there. Yes. You know, the minute I bring you my book, right. I have to, I make them sign a document, mm -hmm. uh, a release document that says on this day, mm -hmm. I came to Kathy Publishing, mm -hmm. I brought my manuscript, Mm -hmm. We have agreed that you need three months mm -hmm. to review my manuscripts. Right. Within three months, I have feedback and I come back for my for my manuscript. For my manuscript. You accept that you shall not duplicate all those smart things. You know mm -hmm. what you say? Yes, yes, contract. Yes, it's yes, a very yes, simple yes. format uh, document that can be read. You have walked in the shoes of that publisher and kind of things they would do. Okay. So again, yeah, you don't okay. self lawyer. Mm -hmm. Find a lawyer who will do something proper for you. That's right. And they can even be the, they play the bad, bad guy on your behalf. So that you, you can continue looking and creating and, creating and being nice, you know, yes. let your lawyer shout out for you. Right. I think <laughs> as, a, as an artist myself, I think um, 
if, if um, not being lazy, I've got to know what my rights are, but it's always safer if somebody else is dealing with, you know, because the, the hustle of chasing copyright infringement and the rest, it, it, it's always nicer if somebody else does that. Exactly. And then, you know, I can keep my, in my space where I am free to create and create, um, you know, with the dignity that, uh, you know, a, a, a contributing taxpayer. Yes, exactly. And you know, artists <laughs> speak of them, themselves as a business. Business, they are right? a business. So they you remember, in any business, we are not fake for production. No, you have an no. accountant, you have a manager. Exactly. You exactly. know, so with your kind of business, also you understand. Exactly. I'm an artist. I know digital has now become That's a right. thing. So maybe I get a digital marketer, and then I tell them, oh, when well, you're digital marketing, you're always looking out for mm -hmm. where my work is being used. Mm -hmm. Flag it. Take all the evidence mm -hmm. you need to take. Screenshots. All those mm -hmm. things. Put them somewhere in a folder. That you take one. That they receive the best. Of of uh, the process yeah thank you, so but always create that thank you I, I like the fact that as artists it doesn't mean that because we have lawyers we don't need to know the law yes we must always know the law so that even by the time you're approaching a lawyer you're coming from a place of knowledge and not you know oh help me the the ship has sunk but you know what you're you're coming in the same way as you say a business person an informed business person would approach a lawyer yes yes thank you very much i think we move on uh to the the next question and this is from dan now i'm going to paraphrase uh, what dan has asked because it's very long <laughs> now dan is asking uh when collaborative works are made where when are there two or more people who are involved when there are two or more people involved in this to whom does the copyright belong and Dan did not specify which art form he's addressing, nor did he, you know, talk about um, who invited who, or, you know, it, it's a very open, ambiguous question. I'm sure you knew what you meant, Dan, but <laughs> it's not clear to us. So please. Yeah. Um, so first of all, if we're going to work together, co-author our work, we become Co-author, co co-author. Co we, we are yes. joint authors. Yes. We each have uh, a stake in the work. Mm -hmm. Now, our greatest challenge in our industry is we mm -hmm. never have these conversations in the beginning. We just say, hey, mm -hmm. I need to collaborate, mm -hmm. collab. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And then sure. we don't write anything. Sure. Uh, then even we do not figure out what we are going to do with these collaborative works mm -hmm. because you have your circles. I have my circle. I might go and decide to morph it into something else. Right. Now here we're talking about right. copyright derivative work. Exactly. We needed to have an copyright what? Yeah. So derivative work, yes. we created something together, yes. right? Uh -huh. And then I decide from this original we created, mm -hmm. let me now put it another like flavor that I have and create something uh -huh. different, but uh -huh. still borrowing, borrowing from, the from the original. So uh -huh. you see, I created derivative work, right. but inspired or even borrowing from the original. Okay. So this original agreement needs mm -hmm. to, to dictate, now we created this work, what is our plan with this work? Yes. Based on this plan we have, if I created something else on my own, yes. can I do it under this contract? Correct. Yes, no? If I can, how do I do it? Mm -hmm. How am I paying you? You know, and even in this original contract we talked about, yes. what is my contribution? What is yours? Are we 50-50, 60-40, 20-30? Right. We have to have that conversation. Then now we put together a contract. A con yeah, because I was going to ask, is all this in the Copyright Act? And no, no. it means whatever, even as artists, we must come together and whatever we're deciding has to be in a contract. Exactly. All right. Yeah, so and we need to stop thinking that we need a law for everything. Mm -hmm. Because the, the law gets into this relationship. That mm -hmm. flexibility for us to decide what we want to sure. do will be interfered. That means even your, your artistic process, my artistic process will also be curtailed. I'll, I'll always feel like I'm in a cage. But you don't want to do that. Contract law is very fluid. It's about what you feel, what I feel. Mm -hmm. And then there are those basic parameters which should be based on something illegal. Yes. You know, all that, the basic balances. True. But everything else is True. between me and you, True. right? So you don't want the law to interfere with that. Right. So when we co-author, right. we have to have at least that basic contract. Yes. Then it should always be the reference point if you want to do anything individually mm -hmm. based on the same work. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So now, um, when we're going back to his question, let's let's try and use it in a scene of music so that it's a bit a bit uh, clearer. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't specify, yeah. but we can use uh, now. You and I are going to um, collab on this music thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm saying things so disrespectfully, but we're going to create a, a music piece. I will write the the words, the lyrics. And you will do the the beats and yeah, the melody. So so, and then 
Yeah, so let's start with, if we're talking about music, mm -hmm. we, we realize first we have what we call copyright and related rights mm -hmm. in music, mm -hmm. which is always important that our artists understand. Yes. Yeah. So yes. copyright is the author of the, the copyright in music would best with the author of the song, so yes. who wrote the lyrics, yes. and the composer who composed the melody, because mm -hmm. sometimes I can have the melody, I'm like, oh, I played my keyboard, and yes. then now you come with lyrics. Yeah, right. so you write some lyrics, right. you're a poet, and exactly. use them together, exactly. you've written together, right? That is right. And then there's a person called an arranger. Mm -hmm. We'll arrange the music, the sequence, they'll tell you, oh, rap here, ad lib here, yeah, that's right. you know, piga bigele gele hapa, Correct. all that stuff. Correct. They make the music colorful. Yes. You find these three parties, can be one person, can be five people. So depending on all these parties, we yes. have a conversation and we have what is called a split sheet. Split sheet. Split sheet. So right. the split sheet will say, yes. we have author, arranger, composer. Mm -hmm. We agree. That's a way composition. Yeah, you know, twenty percent, one hundred percent, fifty percent. We agree. Mm -hmm. You know, based on what I did and what you've done, mm -hmm. I think mine is fifty percent. Right. I did the chorus. Right. Right. I even right. did right. what you know. So we have that mm -hmm. kind of negotiation. Mm -hmm. Uh, the copyright, we're talking about 100% okay. of it. Okay. So we that's how we now we are negotiating, not of 100%. Mm -hmm. On the composition, I did 50%. Right. And then uh, on the composer beat, maybe 20%. So it's that negotiation at the end of the day because we're the ones who know the kind of input each other has put in, in, into creating the work. Mm -hmm. So that speech is also what will guide uh, when revenue is being shared. If money comes through, we are able to say, okay, We've gotten 100k. Our song has been used by some certain corporate on their advert. Right. Uh, we said yours is 20 percent. Uh -huh. Okay, yours is 30 percent. Right. Uh -huh. so, so now we calculate out of that 100k, mm -hmm. everyone has their but share. But who owns that copyright now? So here, mm -hmm. in, uh, it's these three parties. So oh, which yes. means if I commercialize it, I will have to compensate the other party. Uh -huh. And if you do, they say you have to come and tell us. And tell us, I made 50k mm -hmm. and we share it like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is on the song. Oh, so, right. the just the song before it goes even to the studio. Mm -hmm. So, we came up with a song, and maybe someone had it, and they said, Oh, wow, we can use it in an advert, we can use it uh, in a it can be a jingle in a movie or whatever it is, right? So, this is just the song before even the beats have come in place, right? Before we enter the studio. Mm -hmm. Now, when we enter the studio, mm -hmm. related rights now check in. Okay. So, with related rights, we have first uh, the performance. Mm -hmm. So here, performer, mm -hmm. we have the guitar guy, mm -hmm. the performer. Mm -hmm. We will have someone, I don't know, playing the keyboard, right. the performer. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone else after we've written this song will come and sing it. Now he's a performer because the person on the next song. So then we are getting there. Oh, getting not there. yet. So, oh, so there's the singer. Right. We might have the background vocalists as okay. well. Okay. They are also performers. Right. And then now there's the track producer, the guy behind that fun machine because this fancy machine now replaced the guitar the exactly. and exactly. just press thing and yeah that's right you <laughs> you know? Know? <laughs> so then I've been imagining that yeah someone is a producer so that is right. so he's a right. track producer okay but he's not okay. a producer because now that leads us to the second related right uh -huh. the producer under the copyright act right. under the copyright act of Kenya under the copyright all over all the over world, the, world. Right. the producer is the guy with the money with the money so this can be either you, you're feeling rich, yes. you want to sponsor us to do a song, you give right. us some money, you right. go to the studio, right. you become the producer. Okay. Alternatively, the person okay. who owns this fabulous studio yes. might say, you know what, uh, pay me 20000 just for studio time because uh, it costs 50000 or or k to for right. you to own the master recording. You can't pay. Yes. I'll take care of those costs, but then I'm a producer now on, on record uh, and I have the producer right. Again, we don't have that conversation in our industry. So we're always paying like a 20K here, like a 5K here, and then we're imagining we own the master rights. No one is having that conversation. Exactly. So you, you're a businessman, exactly. you, you understand this business. You're like, exactly. well, how can you think 5,000 exactly. is owning the master recording, That's you know? Right. So, but then we have not having this conversation. You, you mm -hmm. assume, this one has assumed. So it goes around telling people that is my master. You, you're here, you're making 5,000. You know, you stood your time. You know, oh so and again, in our copyright yeah. act, it has to be in writing. Yes, so if it's not yes. in writing, it now becomes a game of he said, she said. Again, when I give you the five thousand, did I give you a receipt? What does the receipt say? Ambiguity, so then now that becomes a whole mess. So, are you saying that here is yet another example of how 
you must have a contract. Exactly. You must have the right thing. Yes. What are we agreeing? We have to, to have that contract. So right. you have pre-negotiated with the studio. Right. You told you five thousand. You say, eh, hey, five thousand, five thousand. Yeah, right. nini. What am I getting from that five thousand? We negotiate. Say, ah, okay. Can I add ten? Another five or ten k? Mm-hmm. And I own the master recording. Right. So my kubaliana, yes, have been signed. Right. You know. Oh, wow. Well, I I hope that um, what we're discussing here today is actually um, very clear or is is answering some questions that we might have about some of the things that we do because what we're talking about here is our daily practice during our creation processes and that sometimes and end up putting us in a place that we really don't want to be. So I hope we are answering some of those questions as we go along. Do continue sending us your questions. I have yet um, another question. And this one is, um, I pitched, uh, it says, I pitched a pilot program to a broadcasting house. And even after signing a non-disclosure agreement, so there's the contract, they said, no, they didn't want my idea. But then they stole my idea, created their own show, and now I'm frustrated. What's your take on this? Hey, first, I think it's important, especially in the film industry, we need to start talking to each other, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I need to share my experiences and say, I worked with Broadcaster X, this is what they did to me. You, mm-hmm. you share the same, because again, we, we are able now to figure out what needs to happen there. Okay. Now, an undisclosure agreement mm-hmm. is that document that basically uh, says that I am disclosing an idea to a receiving party. That's right. That this idea sometimes may not be fully uh, uh, developed or even mm-hmm. more concept, conceptualized, mm-hmm. but I have done my research. There's been input that I have done. So it's proprietary information. It may not have space in copyright, mm-hmm. but there's some input there. Mm-hmm. So you're basically safeguarding it under that non disclosure mm-hmm. agreement. Okay. But this idea has to be signed before the disclosure. That's the challenge that mm-hmm. people do not uh, understand. Mm-hmm. That I want to tell you first. Here's my non-disclosure. Right. Read my terms. Right. Are you? Are we on the same page? If you are not, you need us to, say, to negotiate. Right. We negotiate first this before arrangement we actually before I come and I give you all my products. fabulousness. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so if you decide to do that after the fact, yes. this is what happens. That is now the the, the product mm-hmm. because now I'll be like, hmm, now you're giving me an NDA after. I mean, what, this is my ordinary course of business. Right. How are you going to prove mm-hmm. to to people that you brought this information exactly. to me? And this exactly. is what I do every day. Exactly. Yeah, I'll be able to say, oh, you know, my team here, I have I have a scriptwriter from Hollywood. I have one who's worked in Bollywood. You have had one who's done this. I have one who's even a teacher. You know, so how how do you think you're the one? You know, mm-hmm. so that NDA you want to sign before before anyone who writes an NDA is going to be a dishonest person. So already that should be enough of a red light for you. So that then you either you decide, will I give them, will I pitch despite it? If yes. I do, I am aware of the consequences. Correct. So that tomorrow I know I'm the one. I dug my grave. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so let me deal. That's or true. I walk away and I That's say true. what I have created is just too precious to mm-hmm. me. It's okay. You don't want to sign my NDA. Miss Awa, I will deal with another broadcaster or another. Investor. I think another thing that um, puts us um, or makes us a bit uh, unsure of whether I have copyright or not is because we're usually talking about things that are shared experiences. So I'm, I'm busy saying, oh, um, Catherine um, has three dogs and dog A does what, dog B does what, and, and then dog C does what. And then um, I see a TV show which says now that Liz has four dogs, and then I say, Liz copied my idea without also saying that there are some things which are common life experiences that we can't say so and so stole yeah. because it's a way of life. And I think a very good example is that when we say, you know, rich man dies and then now he has five, six wives. So, you know, that's a story that has been told in so many different ways. So as you said in the beginning, it's about the expression of that idea that is copyrightable, exactly. isn't that so? Yeah. Great. So then this person continues to say, what do I do? How do I go about pitching my pilot series confidentially in a safe environment? I think that's what you said, yes? yes. We, we give the, the non-disclosure 
first yes. and then negotiate whether we are both comfortable mm -hmm. and then move on. And then it is signed. It is signed. And make sure it's signed mm -hmm. by the relevant people, especially when you're doing uh -huh. your uh -huh. yeah? you uh -huh. It has to be signed by someone who has that power and that organization to sign. Right. Um, How would you know that? You have you to do, do your homework. homework. You, okay. you have to do your homework. Okay. You remember a few okay. years ago, we had a, an instance uh, mm -hmm. where now it doesn't really a script, yes. but it has something to do with just the issue of always signing with the right person. Mm -hmm. This person decided to go shoot a music video in a certain franchise uh, establishment. Right. Um, and the person they were negotiating with, they did, he didn't bother to ask uh, who he, who or she or she was. Yeah, who are just, you? Like, yeah, and oh, marketing. Oh, That's my. all they were told. I mean, marketing. Yes. Right. So they agree, she makes concessions, they have a conversation, they meet. I don't think they signed an agreement, per mm -hmm. uh, but I think, they, I think they did sign. But anyway, everything systems go, everything was done. Even the day for the shoot, they were called and they said, yeah, we're waiting for you guys to be here at 11. They even agreed your, your artists will wear our uniforms and do right, this, right, you know? Right. Does the production mm -hmm. investment everything. Mm -hmm. Please don't, the air does it a contract. So, yes. out of the kindness of his heart, he said, ah, let me take it, uh, they review it, mm -hmm. just, they're on the same page, to yes. see you know, so now when he took that uh, to them, uh, when he, he knows everything is good to go, he gets a call and he's told, hey, by the way, my bosses have said no, you've already spent oh money. My. Oh my, oh my. So you want to deal with the right people, in, especially yes. with big corporates. Yes. Make sure you're dealing with the big people. You ask, can you sign contracts? Can I, you know? An email from legal or whatever, like, but I have to be aware to know that you have that authority mm -hmm. before you lose that investment. Indeed, yeah, and especially when when shooting uh, videos or whatever it is in a in a certain location that does not belong to you, you do need a signed location release form. Exactly, you cannot proceed with that without that. And those yeah. are the contracts that you yeah, have. Those are the contracts about, and then you also you see also with that kind of arrangement again you're looking at what is the location mm -hmm. who is the owner of the location are there mm -hmm. any special uh issues that i need to pay attention to so because for example if i wanted to shoot in the masai mara mm -hmm. i need a license there i would mm -hmm. a simple like a lo um, location agreement would do mm -hmm. because i have to go to kenya wildlife That's and right. understand what protocol is there in place mm -hmm. do they have their own in-house contract mm -hmm. do they have do's and don'ts yes. all that stuff so uh, when you're doing your wrecking you do all that stuff so that then you, you also make a an informed decision mm -hmm. and then you're aware this is the kind of due diligence i need to do mm -hmm. so that tomorrow they don't tell me to take down my music or my and supposing I'm, I'm shooting on the streets of nairobi as uh, that's public land is it not it is but you still have the um, county to deal with to now deal. so now you have to go to a county uh, offices and, yes. and explain explain that you're shooting a film and right. you have uh, a certain document that there's a license you have to take out Fantastic. and remember you have to go also to kenya film classification board wow. for them to review your work before mm -hmm. um you get another license from them so <laughs> no let me understand this i'm trying to put my work up on youtube so it's simply record the thing upload mm -hmm. so what are we saying <laughs> <laughs> So we are saying yes there are so many rights yes. uh, that coexist in uh in a piece of work so right. now like in this instance we're talking about an audiovisual work yes like a yes film or a video. with my music it's my yeah. latest music video. exactly mm -hmm. so if it's a music video right um remember first uh, i have a team that i am working with yes how is this team coming into place mm -hmm. now in copyright we mm -hmm. have what we call the, the doctrine of commission works or work okay. for hire. Work for hire. Very good. So uh -huh. now, mm -hmm. um, what is that? Victor or so and so is good with the camera. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Example, Emma Solik is very good with conceptualizing uh, music video. Mm -hmm. Right. So I have a conversation. Yo, Enos, Nasakaji, how can we work together? Correct. We have a contract. Yes. So that it's clear what it is mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a popular video, video producer. Okay. Um, and for him, the kind of uh, creative input he puts, he's mm -hmm. attached a value to it mm -hmm. in a way that sometimes he can get co-ownership. Okay. So you have to have that conversation because you need to understand the mod mode of operation yes, before yes, you work yes, with it. Yes, so that then you have it on contract. Right. At the same time, you're like, okay, I want it on my channel. So mm -hmm. you say it there. As much as maybe you, we co-own the video produce, production rights, mm -hmm. I want it on my channel. So mm -hmm. the contract, you say it on my channel and not to us. Mm -hmm. 
But when money comes, that contract says then because I only paid you for the labor you did on that day, yes. and you've agreed we are co-owning cool. the, the rights to the music video. Right. 2030, 4050, whatever it is, we agree, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Then anyone else now, yes. that's like, I, at least I should be able to pay off. Again, remember, you can't always be sharing royalties with everyone. It's such a headache. Correct. You can't have 100 people. Yeah, in fact, you know, in the beginning, it sounds so complicated. I'm like, mm-hmm. do I really want to make this music? Really? Yeah, exactly. So right. like, those people now, you just hire, they mm-hmm. do their work, and they go. And they go. So the, the guy on the camera comes, mm-hmm. does his thing, and they go. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these other people that will the technical team, you hired them. They sign a contract work for hire. Mm-hmm. So even if uh, you know because oh I'm so good with lighting, I figured out who this shot we can do it like this. And after a shadow will come, blah blah blah. You don't start. You don't start saying oh I have copyright. Uh-huh. Like yeah, because it was a work for, for hire. hire. So it, that just right. came up incidentally. You figured something. So right. please do not start claiming I have paid you fifty k. Thanks. You know those conversations need to happen. Right. So that then when I go online, mm-hmm. they don't come after me again. True. So that is the slide. True. The models you will use in that video. In the video. That you is also right. have to have contracts with them. Exactly. Right? And then exactly. disclose your my video vixen, my Thank video you. will be on YouTube, you. broadcasting, <laughs> Indeed. Meaning, Indeed. all that. Because there we have this thing, it's not copyright per mm-hmm. se, but we call it image rights. So with image rights, um, if I'm using you as a video big, then we're talking about your publicity, right? Because that's what you do. That's yes. how you make money, you make you money from your image. Exactly. And then now if it's just on the street, mm-hmm. uh, a guy passed by, uh, we now need to be aware of now it becomes issue of um, privacy, a privacy exactly. right issue. Exactly. So now you have to be clever with it. If I'm going to show your picture and you're some random stranger, you're going to appear in my video, mm-hmm. then I have to talk to you, we agree, am I going to pay you? And what not, we have a contract. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to pay you, but I wanted a, a street, a busy street and whatnot. And I show pe- people's shoes or something. Uh-huh. So I'm taking care of the people's privacy, but I'm trying to, my audience wants, I want my audience to know I was in the busy street of Nairobi, then I'm taking shots of Kibera. I'm not yes. Kibera, Yashara Street, that's yes. a sign. That's why, again, that license mm-hmm. from the county is important. And then subsequently, because like in the film industry, you have the stage police act mm-hmm. where the Kenya Film Classification Board mm-hmm. has to also be aware you're shooting some audiovisual work. And because they, they will classify, the initial step is that they want to review the work that you're going to, to, to showcase or you're going to shoot. So then that they, they you know, stamp it and agree. Right. So that now you come back for classification, they, they, are, they have you on file already that you did this work. We're aware so now of this. We are aware work. of it. So now we are now classifying it. 15 right. years, 20 years, right. uh, not suitable for underage, all that stuff. Correct. That is important, Correct. right? If Correct. you do not do this again, that is another offense and a different act. Now the stage mm-hmm. is that. Mm-hmm. So all there are so many rights that usually tend to uh, come in and they will evolve with the kind of creativity and ideas that the person is shooting her. So these are just some basic examples. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Now, um, and, and it's good you've talked about that. Because uh, I'd like to know, th- this, uh, th- another question that has come in is saying, um, a corporate organization has commissioned some work from an artist. Uh, this has been created, paid for, delivered. Uh, the artwork somehow gained some popularity. And then it starts generating income that nobody had ever seen coming. Yeah? What are my rights as an artist now? So with com- Commission works, there will always come a contract. Um, then the contract uh, becomes very important. Mm-hmm. Um, so the contract will state um, what rights am I relinquishing or am I relinquishing is a fabulous legal word. Yeah, but, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I am giving up, oh, basically. Because yeah? okay. when you're commissioned, you mm-hmm. give up certain rights. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the context of copyright, uh, I have commissioned you to paint something for me. Um, so at least now the contract should be your guide. Right. Uh, what is the plan? You have the author or the artist. I need to also be smart. When I'm negotiating, I want to know, okay, uh, you want me to do a painting. Mm-hmm. What's your plan with the painting? Mm-hmm. You want to do an advertisement or you want to put it in a public space mm-hmm. or what, 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 how are you making money from it? Mm-hmm. You know, I understand that scope so that then I'm able to 
um, have a preview of where this work can go, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then I know what I can negotiate for. Mm -hmm. Now, if you end up signing one of those very blanket contracts that say I take this in perpetuity and yes. perpetuity means forever, forever and ever, yes. um, some crazy other, you yeah. know, you can never do derivative work, so right. you can't right. or repaint this work, like all that stuff, mm -hmm. you need to be very careful. So mm -hmm. this is one of those things that mm -hmm. it's the contract, Mm -hmm. Excuse me, it's the contract about the offer on the table. Right. So based right. on that offer, what are you agreeing to? Then you'll be able to, dis to, to, to be in a position to see what else can the work bring and how can I protect myself yes. or negotiate and say, no, should this happen, mm -hmm. then you will further come to me and we have a negotiation or we will work together or you know, should you exceed X amount of money, then you'll compensate me some more from the more money that you made. You know, like have that provided in a contract. So it's okay. extremely contractual. But, but, but is it wrong? If, for example, I, I create this thing um, that's beautiful and I sell it, I'm very happy with the money that they paid me. And uh, then whoever bought it, for whatever reason, they made extra money on top of it. Is it wrong for me to feel you know, satisfied? So you're satisfied with what you have with what I've already been paid for. It's fine. Because at the end of the day, when you're negotiating, mm -hmm. you also want something that will you will you get an offer that will help you sleep at night or make that's you sleep right. at night. That's you know? right. I'm like, yeah, that's I made right. fifty thousand. I'm easy, you yes. know. Yes. <laughs> Not for oh, I made fifty thousand, but 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 that no. but 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 yes. Now what brings all this? And, and you see, even when you're talking about fifty thousand these days, the the, the the kind of monies that are being spoken about are in the millions. So you yeah. see. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if if we've finished uh, with a contractual arrangement, you've commissioned work from me, I've been you've been, I've been paid. Um, okay, I know the Constitution was the, the sorry the Copyright Act was uh, amended to talk about um, after sales. Yeah. So what, what is that? So with the, especially uh, on the audio, uh, no, sorry, not audio, <laughs> artistic, artistic work, visual, yeah, visual, visual arts. So yes. especially the paintings. Yes. Um, the resale, the you know, because art will change hands, right? So and then it, uh, sometimes it appreciates. Yes, yeah, so resale, not so, after sale. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> you're right. Yes, you're right. Yeah, there's so much copyright. <laughs> you're right. so, yeah. But like the resale, right? Yes. So uh, go down buy the painting. Yes. And then five down. Uh, years, five years down the line, mm -hmm. the, a certain embassy says, oh, I love this work. Uh, can I buy it? And then they buy it. You bought it for uh, 5,000 Kenya shillings and now it's, at, it's, it's being bought for 1 million. Right. 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 Uh, so now the author under mm -hmm. this new right mm -hmm. should be able to get out the resale right where they mm -hmm. make some certain percentage mm -hmm. from the amount of money you have made from mm -hmm. reselling that art. Mm -hmm. Right. So but now with it has come, so, has come with those challenges of how do I trace the work, how do mm -hmm. I know you know, mm -hmm. we start thinking about uh, attaching some sort of technology so mm -hmm. that the author can always have a dashboard somewhere and they can see, oh, my painting from 1992 is still going around and, That's you know, right. like, That's so right. the conversations now we need to figure out in terms of yes. what that means. Because even as a, as a visual artist, you said, do, does every visual artist know whom they sold their work to and at what price? Exactly. So that if it is resold, they can actually have legitimate claim or at least have an idea of where to start tracing the work. Exactly. Right. So, so there the, the kind of uh, systems we need to put in place. Mm -hmm. We really need to think about them and figure out how that would look like. So it's not right. only that just a Kenyan challenge, it's an mm -hmm. international challenge. Those right. are the conversations that are happening. And of course now the collaborations with you know people in science and tech mm -hmm. to see also what else uh, can be done in regards to that. Right. Right. Thank you. Um, we're getting quite um, a few more questions. Um, okay. Um, let me just get to the next one. Please do continue to send in your questions. We have a bit more time and we can actually um, work with you on this. Now, apps, because that's the, the question. I'd like to create an app. I'm creating an app and I don't know how to go about getting copyright. Okay, so um, remember the authorship vests with the creator, right? So the software developer is the one who will own it. Again, so who is the software developer? It might be me as an individual or my company. 
So if, it has a, if it's a company and my employees will have to have a clause in their contract where they, they relinquish all their IP, they, they give up all their IP rights mm -hmm. uh, to this software because it was developed during their course of uh, employment. Right. So then right. now when they leave, they will never say, oh, but I left, I, you know, Liz Inc. Incorporated, owns, uh, they stole my copyright or my software you mm -hmm. know, as an employee. Mm -hmm. So that needs to happen. And there's me as an individual as well. Mm -hmm. um, I own it, right? Yes. So I can go and copyright, mm -hmm. register the copyright to the source code. So mm -hmm. the source code is, you know, a copy, when um, a software is being created, there's this, it's, a, it's a, an interaction of all these symbols we see on the keyboard. Right. The letters, right. the, yes. all these exclamation marks, Correct. crescendos, and blah, blah, blah. Yes. So they will do certain things yes. and give a certain outcome. So I could do A147, underscore something mm -hmm. to do something else and someone else will do underscore four five one two like just different organization of what my initial code is right, right. right. again expression so Correct. for us we copyright software we do not patent software like america and mm -hmm. sure enough americans are kicking themselves right now because it's become a very expensive affair yes, for indeed. them to uh, create further software and apps because mm -hmm. of this patent system mm -hmm. that they have, mm -hmm. right? Um, so claiming that novelty for them wasn't a smart idea and approach. Mm -hmm. So for us, copyright, because mm -hmm. how you will do it to have a different uh, execution or command from what I will do, right? Mm -hmm. My combination might make a cartoon dance. Mm -hmm. Your combination maybe is to shoot in a game, yes. in another game, you Correct. get. So that's the expression. So right. whatever I have created, the means I do that, mm -hmm. I will register it for copyright as well. So mm -hmm. all those, you see, you will print it out or you put it in a document, and then that's what you will register for copyright. And then there will also be a description that this is the source code, this is what it will do, it is for a fighting game, it has the following elements, it can dance, two steps, five steps, one cartoon dances, six steps to the right, can do a flip, like that whole description. Right. right, that's what you protect. Correct. Now, uh, the interesting now for, thing for us in our market, and I think even globally, is that now this is a skill, a skill set for very few people, or a knowledge mm -hmm. acquired by very few people. Mm -hmm. So I have a fabulous idea for an app, mm -hmm. but I have no know how, right? So I will go to someone else and I say, Oh, I heard you're a very good software developer. Yeah. So again, yeah, now we have a conversation. What is your rate? Uh, you know, because of the kind of work I've done me uh you you pay me 500k yes yeah can i afford that 500k mm -hmm. what is what, what am i trying to put together okay. yes. yeah <laughs> yes. so all that so if i can afford you're like okay fine i'll pay you 500k this is what i want you to do exactly. i have told you uh the creative what, what i expect mm -hmm. um and you treat it as a work for hire so any ip belongs to me correct you only retain again i didn't talk about moral rights but at yes. least you keep your moral right which means you know you'll always be remembered as the author Recognized as created yeah, as attribution, attribution. exactly. Yes. That is one thing that we cannot take away, Correct. regardless. Yes. So, so even if I'm employed, yes, right. you always by Kathy created this. That's something right. they cannot take away right. from you, and you can sue okay. that because it's provided for under the copyright. Right. right. So we have that conversation, mm -hmm. and it's clear. I have you over hundred k. I own the mm -hmm. software, mm -hmm. so I go commercialize, make my money, thanks. You have no claims further than that. That's right. Now, in the event where I cannot, I cannot afford, afford, yes, because 500 is not little money. Yeah, mm -hmm. so in the event I cannot, mm -hmm. now we have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a co-author or co-owner? Mm -hmm. Yes, no, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get on the same page. This is, what, this is what I want you to create for me, but this is what I want to do. I am in marketing, I can mm -hmm. find, I can find the, the market for it. I am trying to create something different or whatever. You know, like I am the vision bearer, right? But you're doing all the heavy lifting because you know. So we have that conversation. Yes. Some will say 50 50, others, some sort of percentage. Yeah. Agreement. So you reach a, you yes. have that negotiation yes. and then have a contract. So now here we're talking about mobile co, co authorship, joint venture, sort of arrangement. Then we have it on, on agreement mm -hmm. and we agree. Because of the kind of work I'm doing, you're only the tech, so you're not in the decision making part. Uh -huh, so me, that's where I was going yeah. last, you know. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're just tech. So me, uh, every time I make money, mm -hmm. I give you your fifty percent or your thirty percent. But you won't but say what I can do with this. Exactly, thing. right. It has to be the contract. Okay, we are very clear of what kind of authors we are or what kind of partners we are. That's right. Exactly. That's so that then there is no issue. Yes. Our, not having those contracts. <laughs> The project is almost 70% uh, done. And then I say, hey, Kathy, you didn't sign my agreement. 
And he's like, hey, the work I have done. Exactly. Hey, Sponsor, now you owe me 90%. I'm 90% owner. <laughs> so, exactly. and you see, because you're calling the tune, because you have the expertise. That's true. That's true. You know, again, contracts are signed in the beginning. In the beginning. I think um, as artists, we're very reserved about contracts. They sound so complicated. They sound so time consuming. And after all, we're friends, Liz. So why, why do we need something, you know, written? And yet, to Nailewana. You know, and I think um, it, it's a good discussion that we've had today, which shows us that just because I have a contract with you doesn't mean you're not my friend. And it's it's putting us all on the same playing field, level playing field, where yeah. I know what you expect from me, and you know what to expect from, uh, I'm sorry, and I know what to expect from you and, and vice versa, right? Exactly. Now, um, there's a, a disclaimer that I would really like to, um, put here, uh, coming up, it, please give me a moment to find it, because we need to be very um, clear that the, the advice that we're giving here does not constitute legal advice. Exactly. So, you know. <laughs> this is purely for information. For information, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So it does not constitute attorney-client relationship or privilege. Correct. And so you can't go to court and say, exactly. Liz and <laughs> Kathy said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yeah, yeah. so anyone who feels even like that, something they are related with has been touched on, yes. they need to find independent legal advice. Exactly. Exactly. So that's important. Exactly. Right? Don't say at a visit to a lawyer. You've not come to my office. Sure. I'm not on record representing you. Tegela is Kathy, so... And that this is, is purely information and entertainment. I think that one of the most um, confusing or um, things that is, is difficult to grapple with is that copyright law is, is so case-based because two things might sound so, so much the same, but in one case, there's just a slight thing that changes the whole outcome of the, of the, you know, the, the whole process or the direction exactly. and whether your copyright has been infringed okay. or you know, has not been infringed. And then also um, whether you're going after the correct person exactly. <laughs> or actually you should be going over after somebody totally different. Yeah. Right. So in your in your experience, Liz, because um, I'm not seeing any other. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, as I, someone copied my song. How do I go about reporting it? And appropriately and um, approximately, how long will it take, Kikobo? get into action. And that's a uh, thing from you. That ownership, uh, mm -hmm. is there some registration of some sort to begin with? Or um, were you the first person to put it online with a timestamp, with some sort of evidence yes. that it originated from you? Yes. That's the first question we need to ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we confirm that. Because right. that is what then we use mm -hmm. to go to Kenya Copyright Board and say, because I am a citizen, I do not, I cannot arrest. Yes. You are the body in charge of copyright. And my song has been infringed. Here is evidence, my mm -hmm. YouTube page mm -hmm. on 14th February, 1990. Let's say no, 2005. Yes. <laughs> <Remember>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was before, <laughs> you know. So yeah. uh, February 2002, 14, I put on my YouTube, yes, or, you know, yes. whenever mm -hmm. I put this song, mm -hmm. and here is the song that is playing on radio. Yes, here and mm -hmm, then they're able now to assist. Now you officially lodge a complaint, and then now they will assist in figuring out uh, how to. And you know, pursue this particular party, but that's on the criminal side. Mm -hmm. There's a civil side, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, with the civil uh, issue now, yes. it's where you now look for a lawyer mm -hmm. and you say, So and so has sung my song without my right. permission, right? And then you give it that the same information you would be giving to Kekobo for me also to make sure I'm doing the right thing, mm -hmm. right? I have mm -hmm. proper information, so all that disclosure needs to happen, right? I ask all the questions, and then from there, um, I ask you, um, Are you willing to? have this set out of court or is it your position to fight to the bitter end? Yes. <laughs> I will yes. educate you on both uh, possibilities mm -hmm. and what you should be uh, you know, aware of and what you should prepare yourself for. And then from there, we devise a strategy. Mm -hmm. From there, we will start with the basic demand letter. Um, and then we ask for payment or ask them to come to the table. Um, and then now we start conversations around that. If they're too stubborn, then now we can proceed to court. Which it goes to say that in the case of copyright law, it is the aggrieved who actually has to do the legwork exactly. to, to prove that actually something has, or their copyright has been infringed, something has been 
mis, uh, misused, stolen, exactly. vandalized. So it is actually the aggrieved yeah. responsibility. Because copyright first is a personal right, right. it's an individual right. Mm -hmm. It rests with me as a person. Mm -hmm. um, so because it's mine, it's up to me to police my work. It's up to me to know what is going on. Mm -hmm. It's it's like having a shamba, my own shamba. Yes. I put a fence. I'm always going to check. I have a watchman. Right. If someone decides to throw a banana peel and I can find them, they have litter. Exactly. So you figure out, exactly. you know, under the different laws, how else right. they can, they can, you know, yes. you can you know, uh, help yourself. If they decided, I'm, I'm feeling adventurous. I can walk using the public uh, road, but now I, I decided I'm, I can hide jump. So I want to yeah. jump through the jamba. <laughs> it's trespassing, <laughs> you know. So it, it's the same thing with IP. True. You have to know. You want to know True. when someone is trespassing, yes. quote unquote. They're using your exactly. work and all. It's exactly. personal, so right. you have to really be active. Right. So if you don't do it, no one will do it for you. Indeed. Yeah. Which means that, as um, as a, a copyright holder. If there's a work that I am trying to produce, it is important for me to document the process of me producing that work because that will count as evidence in the court of law. Exactly. It? Yeah. So every step I take, if there's you know a few camera pictures and yeah. a video recording of um, going about it, yeah, especially for artistic works, right? Artistic works, right. captures. Dance, the movables, even yes, dance. Yes. There are those ones you really, that's what you want to do so that then right. there will always be some sort of evidence. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. And now something we need to talk about is uh, content online. Uh -huh. So people tend to think uh, because it was on the internet, it's free. Yes, oh, I saw a picture. Yes. Oh, it's free. Put, put it on your presentation. Oh, yes. put, put it in exactly. your book. <laughs> and then sell exactly. your book. Yes. No, it's not free. Oh uh, the due diligence needs to happen when you're getting right. images. Because like what happens when you go on Google, yes, you will get the thumbnails and right. whatnot. So you, you press it uh -huh. and then you um, follow the further link and right. see where did I get where they get this picture from or who is the picture, who is using it. Correct. Um and they are starting ownership to it mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Like you have to really dig deep. And at the end of the day, if you see you do not know who this author is and you can't get in touch then you know ah this one i'm going to use a i'm going to get to you know create a billboard i won't touch this picture because heavy investment i'm not sure that i have the copyright is there a picture of uh, a model you need and i don't know if that picture who's the model have they been here what kind of contracts have they signed for this that's picture right. to you know that's right so because of that right. you know be very careful mm -hmm. all these platforms for stock images read the terms and conditions Mm -hmm. Because they have very specific terms and conditions regarding the copyright, the image rights, and all that. Yes. Make sure you're on the same page. So that also when you're paying, mm -hmm. you don't think that, that you paid for everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. And some of them exactly. they're like they paid the cop the the, the photographer, mm -hmm. but the, the model in the picture probably doesn't even know they were on that stock image. <laughs> and then you go and do a fabulous billboard, you know. So it's important that those rights are clear. Mm -hmm. Now in the event that um you're more in the academia space or you're a knowledge share kind of person, you have the Creative Commons uh, right. license right. and platform. Right. This is where now we have different copyright authors and owners who contribute their work under the Creative Commons license. Mm -hmm. The Creative Commons license, are the, we have those two, like there are four images yes. that are usually going around and then the double C the around. Double C and, yes. So mm -hmm. any image that you see that are Creative Commons, again, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. images are the terms of the license. Mm -hmm. So you will see that kind of little man or the shape of a guy, exactly. it means you must attribute the author. The author. Yeah. Correct. Then you see that kind of round thing with an arrow, it means share alike. So mm -hmm. you can share in different platforms with exchanging ideas or whatever it is on a blog, you can hyperlink because it's a source of knowledge, mm -hmm. you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Then there will be that kind of side, I don't remember for no non commercialization. Yes. yes. So which means you can commercialize. Yes, you yeah. can use it, you can do use what it. you want with it, but you cannot make money. Yeah, and right. when, you, when you're in doubt, you're better off contacting the artist or mm -hmm. the author before you use it. So that mm -hmm. then it's expressed. Because there's some things that become, they are borderline commercialization, not for profit, yes. that you, you're not so yes. sure. Yes. So it's only prudent that right. you also be a serious person and, um, you know, respect those wishes. The good thing is also for the Creative Commons, it also builds artists and, and authors' um, reputation. And, you know, they, they get to be seen, right? Which helps them to get more work. Mm -hmm. We don't have many um, Kenyan artists, authors, 
uh, you know, generators of work contributing their work um, to the creative license, the creative commons. Yes. So we need to do that, to do that more because mm -hmm. the more we do it as Kenyan authors or as Africans, we'll, we'll get more work. Mm -hmm. We're not asking ourselves, <coughs> sorry, we're not asking ourselves, why is it when there's an African themed movie being done, it's a foreigner scoring the music, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And yet we are the ones who know what that African vibe is. The, the, the feel, feel, the feel, the feel yes. You know, that can drum is a way exactly, exactly. You know? Yes, so, yeah, yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so but why is it it's, it's uh, some foreigner who's getting that one? Because they don't know our people. Our people are busy just dying also with Yangu Yangu because we, we, we just, we are now just discovering about copyright. Mm -hmm. So we're really stuck in Yangu. Can't it with my life. Is it because know? of past experiences? I think so. I, I, yeah, because I think uh, we've been uh, taken for granted, uh, pinched, yeah. uh, you know, so we, we've become so defensive yeah. without realizing that if we let go a little bit, mm -hmm. the, the markets actually open up so much better yeah, for, that's, for that's us. True. And we need to yes. just also just observe other uh, people in the industry, yes. other cultures, yes. how other people are, are basically creating opportunities for themselves. Mm -hmm. You find that they are the ones who are always ready to take a picture here, put it on Creative Commons or whatever it is, and say, right. use it, That's you right. know? So they are free to give, so that then now they, a corporate someone will always remember, hey, you see that photographer is very good. Wow, mm -hmm. that documentary, we have to call we that, to that call photographer that. from yes. Nairobi, yes. call him back. So yes. I, is it, are we saying that Creative Commons is almost like a, an open uh, portfolio for me to put in, you know, samples. I, you know, this is a jingle. I've given it to the world to yeah. use in a certain way yes, for free exactly. without having to ask me. So that, but it's also a way of um, saying, excuse me, here I am, exactly. and I, I know how to make jingles like this. Exactly. Because so you don't have that kind of man on your license and say exactly. attribution songs like yes, exactly. so that exactly. everyone will be like, exactly. Kathy can play drums. Thank that's true. We have a film. That's true. Kathy's song will feature, or that's she will true. write a song for us. You that's know, true. that's how you get to. Mm -hmm. So you know, even on the TikToks, mm -hmm. because it's a widely used platform. Exactly. You if your jingle is on a TikTok. You're, and, you know, you're getting that's that right. exposure. Yeah. And yeah, it's just entertainment, right? right. So you're just right. like, you know, share, like, it's, nobody's going to do it on an advertisement or whatever, True. but people are just having fun with it. Right. They're sharing it, I'm telling my friend, that's my right. friend does another that's video. Right. You know, so that's, that social conversation is happening and people are always having your name at the back of their mind. Exactly. So when, you know, even an ad agency is contracted, they'll say, hmm, this is a client brief. This is our password. Right. You're on a database. That's right, that's right. Thank you, Liz. Liz, I don't know, um, what is your experience in artists approaching lawyers about um, copyright? If we can um, just uh, remove this. What's, the, what's, the, what's your experience? Sorry, Eva. About artists um, approaching lawyers. Ah, yes. Um, so for the longest time, the, the industry, first of all, the industry existed without us for a while, eh? because they imagine that we don't need lawyers, we don't need lawyers, mm -hmm. which is a very common, uh, it was a very common misconception. Um, and I think that approach sort of contributed to the fact that for the longest time, the creative arts wasn't taken seriously, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, you just go entertain people and they're like, mm, you know, there were, people are not embraced structures. Um, then now people realize, oh, there's money coming in, you know, foreigners are also coming, they're looking for structure. Mm -hmm. So then we realize, okay, um, we have to start in this structure. We realize, hey, yeah, we have a copyright act, you know? Um, so with all these developments now, the need for lawyers has been there. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that people imagine that lawyers are expensive is uh, also a misnomer. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We only expensive when there's a fight. Like, oh, it's good. expensive because why, why is it expensive? Because we absorb all your heart, eh? all your drama. That, we fight on your behalf. Isn't that the reason why so, the creatives are like, you know what? My my artwork was infringed. My copyright was infringed. Fine. You know, as opposed to approaching a lawyer, the costs are so high, it's tedious. I'm not sure where this is going, you know. I, I'm glad to say that of late, there are very many lawyers who have come up who are very interested in the IP yeah. and are trying to see the law through creatives' eyes. Yes. Because, you know, creatives, it's not that they, they don't know what is right and wrong, they do. They don't, it's not that they don't know when their, you know, their copyright has been infringed. It's just that, the, 
um, because of who creatives are, the tedious process of having to walk into court every other day, we're discussing with the lawyer, we're fighting about money, we are, you know, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Has law changed so that it can accommodate, and not even accommodate, but respect the different um, nature of creatives? Yeah, we are, we are slowly evolving, especially on the legal side, mm -hmm. because, um, like you said, more lawyers are opening up to this space, yes. and, and there's a way as artists we, we like to do stuff. There's yes. a way we like to be talked to, That's right. to be related to. That's so right. lawyers are now embracing that, mm -hmm. and they realize that, you know, uh, I need to be in a relatable space. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, see anything on that eye, I look like I'm about to suffocate you. Yes. And even if you do, your yeah. attitude towards yeah. me so, should reflect, you know, that respect. Exactly. You know? yes. So that's what also helps because mm -hmm. now we have seen a lot of uh, growth of mediation and arbitration in, in the industry and especially mediation. Mm -hmm. um, for yes. me, especially, we yes. rarely go to court. Mm -hmm. But it means mm -hmm. that I also have, uh, as a lawyer, I tamper myself down. I walk in the shoes of an artist. I, you know, like, I think creative lawyer is what we call it, mm -hmm. right? So that then I am not saying, oh, the only option is going to court. Mm -hmm. Court is the last option. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have, uh, there's this popular saying, intellectual property has a shelf life of a banana. So if we are still, we are stuck in court and court takes years, two years, four years, three years, we are fighting like a song here, we've, we've gotten an injunction basically saying you can't play this song. And then someone else comes and creates a new feel beat, you know, and then all this creativity that you come out, you have come up with because we are here fighting, it's a past. So five, five years down the line, we conclude the case, but now that's all true. It's so accumulated. So now lawyering has evolved, um, and we have also what is called now protective lawyering, which for creatives is a term we have coined for mm -hmm. them to understand. Mm -hmm. Protective lawyering means. Uh, and you are aware you have created something, you're able to sit down with a lawyer, they help you to protect, because there is, it's not a canvas a process, it's a peaceful process, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's something that you plan before you launch a project as well, so don't just wake up in the morning and call a lawyer and say, I want 50 contracts, you know, it's right. the most important. Okay, give me a rough idea, how much, you, you know, I, I'm not asking for your terms and conditions, but roughly how much are we talking about, because you see, if you tell me, going to Kikoba, I remember before, was it a thousand bob, mm -hmm. to get the form, you see, now I, I need, so that I say, oh, just a thousand to yeah. get a whole collection, you know. Now you ask yourself, then why was I not doing it? So roughly, you know, if, if for example, I come to you and I say, I have this concept and I'm, I'm willing to work with one person and we want to do Roughed me a target of a contractor, how much does that cost me? So it usually depends. Mm -hmm. So it's about negotiation. It's about negotiation. It's about negotiation. In fact, that's what I'm saying. Roughly. Because yeah. I know so it depends from so it depends person, to person. person to person. It depends on the kind of uh, idea or concept or whatever yes. it is you have in yes. place. Mm -hmm. um, so you find that most lawyers will have an initial consultation fee. Um, again, you negotiate for yourself because yes. that's not subject to the remuneration order. Uh -huh. um, it's it's in, a, in free space. Yeah, it's a free it's space. It's you, the artist, and the yeah. lawyer. Okay. So there we can have a conversation mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and then you have that initial meeting. Right. From the initial meeting, you get a, a roadmap mm -hmm. from all this information you share. And you say, okay, you know, copyright, okay, uh, who are you working with? Uh, you need this kind of contracts. Mm -hmm. If you have many contracts, of course, there will be some concessions. Exactly. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah, negotiating. Exactly. So because now you're maybe you're bringing bulk business, we're having that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes some lawyers are also open to other ideas which seem lawyers also taking equity in, in startup firms and things like that. Right. It's about negotiating. Okay. But that initial consultation is always important mm -hmm. because it will also also help you to decide whether this is how you want to proceed or you might want to change a few things. Because mm -hmm. sometimes as artists you have these fabulous ideas, but then you find you have no space in the law That's or right. some of these things you want to do maybe even illegal or impossible, mm -hmm. right? Or just very hard to navigate because policy, because legislation, mm -hmm. you know? So that initial uh, consultation is always important. Mm -hmm. You have that first. Mm -hmm. So that then when you're doing your project, you do it in a systematic fashion. It's not just something you woke up and right. stumbled upon. Right. So when you do that, you're able to um, find money and figure out how to protect yourself. Because we, we also have to, you know, um, as an imagine a business being a person that's right you have to buy clothes 
Exactly. Yeah. You have to buy shoes. True. You have to buy True. in underwear. True. So think of it like that, True. right? So True. that initial consultation is like getting the underwear. Protecting, protecting. By the time you're looking fabulous, your marketing, your set. Yeah. Got you. Got you. And one question here. Do DJs have copyrights? Oh God, if you do not own it, it is not <laughs> sure. But I think I, I understand where this DJ is coming in from. Yes. Then we need to become now um, um, composers. Master mixers. Is that what we No, call? no, no. They're also sure, but now become like composers in their own right. Like right. DJ Khaled. He's yes. Now, like, put, yes. You know, composing music. Correct. In that respect, yes. Mm-hmm. But now in this mixing and whatnot, mm-hmm. again, it becomes an issue of the derivative works, right? That's right. So because you're already using a work that belongs to someone else, mm-hmm. you have to either take out your license directly mm-hmm. or, you know, if you're performing in events, you, mm-hmm. you will write on the public performance license that the venue you would That's have right. from the right. collective management organization, right. come, Kenya Studio Musical Producers, uh, Breeze Performance Society right. of Kenya, MCSK, mm-hmm. Music mm-hmm. Producers Society right. of Kenya, and sorry, mm-hmm. Music Operation Society right. right. of Kenya. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. So, DJs don't have a copyright in the best they can. And if DJs. there are, a, um, you know, um, what we call the, the normal, in quotes, DJ, they don't have copyright. Yes. But they can create they derivative can create. works. And that means there are permissions to be sought. There are so many exactly. other things before they can get on. There. And it's not yeah. easy because looking, you just look at like the kind of music that we use. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's international music, it means you have to have conversation with Universal, EMI, all these big right. uh, record labels and publishers, right? So then you figure that out. If it's at the local level, mm-hmm. you have to talk to the artists directly mm-hmm. and figure out, find a working, a working um, program or process. Right. You know, it's no longer that. Um, because you know we, we realize that people are stuck in that mentality that DJs uh, um, market us or market artists. So yes. then for them they are like, I'm marketing you. So why am I paying you? <laughs> well, if that's yes. if, if you agree, yeah. that's you a, agree. a personal choice. Exactly. So <laughs> then the yes. levels that do that. Yes. So that's yeah. why when DJs, uh, yes. DJ became a thing. Mm-hmm. It's the labels who said, Oh, now we need this jockey in a club. Right. Uh, we pay them some money so that we make sure every week when we have new songs. It's been played in the club and our artists are getting popular. That's how right. DJs became, came about. But now it's evolved, right? Mm-hmm. And now DJs are also now making money independently. So why would a DJ make money and leave the artist yes. struggling, yes. right? So even now as we are online during this COVID season, we have, we have started, we saw mm-hmm. DJs putting mm-hmm. disclaimers, oh, it's not mm-hmm. mine, subject to US copyright. I'm like, mm-hmm. are you in US or in Kenya? <laughs> So what they were doing during the, the COVID moment, really, uh, in terms of, of getting uh, mixes, you know, that they, they were playing for us, is actually copyright infringement. Exactly. And some of them were taken down. Those mm-hmm. that have not been taken down, it's not to mean it's correct or, or right. Yes. It just means that some of those songs that stayed online, their authors and, and um, their publishers and record right. labels were deliberate and said, uh, they told Facebook or YouTube or the back end, any money or any benefits channel them to our account. Okay. Yeah. So you won't get money because we did say that uh, policing of infringement is up to the person who feels aggrieved. So they said, okay, we are going to reach an agreement with this DJ. We're going to say any advertising money you get is ours, but keep the work up. Yes. All right. And then the others who said there's a takedown notice. Take down, take down, down. take down. And you see, it's, it's, they're right. Indeed. That's copyright. I can Indeed. decide. I decide to make it available or not. Or so if I don't like what you're doing with it, I'll shoot. Yeah. Last question, I think, because we are close to running out of time. Um, when, when, um, if, for example, I have a competition and I submit my work and I submit my work, and you know, these are creative works. What, what? The person who has received them, mm-hmm. or if I see my work, it does not win anything. Yeah. But I later on see my work somewhere else. What should I look out for so that that does not happen? Terms and conditions of terms and conditions. <laughs> of that famous phrase. Yes. Competition. Yes. You know, I don't remember as a kid. I used to get terms and conditions of life. I'm like, where are these terms and conditions? <laughs> But back then, I'm like, ah, not my monkey, not my circle. True. You know, that's, that's what I'm really doing down the lane. I'm an IP lawyer. And then I'm like, terms and conditions. Right. Now I started right. looking. And then right. you see in some of the competitions, that's completely over there. You're like, 
<laughs> you almost need a magnifying glass, right? Like, uh-huh. Or even the question: Did no. you sign a contract, or did you look at any terms and conditions, or you just submitted? Exactly. And you see, back in the day, yes. those terms and conditions were at the bottom of that advertisement. <laughs> oh yes, the advert of sending you know? the call. Yes, yeah, that's yes, called. Sending. So back then, those were those were like, now those terms and conditions. Right. Are right. I don't know if people used to read them back then. I was too young. Yes. So, but now, fast forward in the digital space uh, and TV and all that they will always tell you go to the website mm-hmm. or um go to our social media or whatever it is so you have to find these terms and conditions when they say terms and conditions apply it's a contract mm-hmm. so find it before you enter your works and then you read what are their provisions what are they saying mm-hmm. uh what happens when you win what happens to the to your work if you do not win some of them will say uh, they would expressly state that should you submit automatically give up your IP your copyright okay. and we own it. Yes. Are you comfortable yes. with that? Yes. Because at the end of the day it's a contract. Yes. You know it's holding a gun to your head. You say yes. Mekubali, you say no. yeah. Mekubali okay. sound. Tomorrow you see it on yes. a coffee mug on a bus, you say right. yes. Right. <laughs> oh my. You you oh made my. that conscious decision. Nobody yes. forced you. Indeed. Right. So those terms and conditions become very important. You need to read them, read the fine print right. to know what exactly happened to you what and if it makes you sleep at night then fine oh i, th- I thank you liz i thank you very much and i i hope that um as we've been discussing because uh, the creative space is a space for artists who are business people it's not you know before it was idlers and people have nothing better to do this is a, this these are people who are creating creating an industry. Exactly. So it, they're, they're very serious about their work. They're very, you know, passionate about their work. And it is a business. So I'm, I'm saying that strictly because sometimes when we are given contracts to read, you know, we were like, where do I sign? And you start signing before even reading the contract. So just that those uh, few minutes that you would spend reading a contract protects your business. You're, you know, you're now taking your, the, the, your, your CEO of your business, literally. Exactly. So it's the high time we, we embrace it and start acting as such. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Liz. It's, it's been great having yes. a chat with you. <laughs> yes. I, I, I think I'd like to hand over to Professor Kimani. I hope we have not over, overshot our time lot. <laughs> no, you have not. You've been absolutely phenomenal. We are really, really grateful. <laughs> Kathy Mujomba, creator of uh, copyright at the Go Down Art Center, and Liz Lenjo, IP and entertainment lawyer. You know, really, thank you so much. You've teased out most of the issues. We are grateful. I'm sure that um, Wasanit Najisot is um, helping. You know, the creative sector, and you've really set the bar pretty high for 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 the other you know sessions. So we are really really grateful and. I have received lots of, um, you know, text messages. How do I get in touch with them individually and so on? So we'll be reaching out to some of the people who are asking for your numbers and so on, um, you know, through, through a, a different platform. So again, thank you so much, Kathy and Liz. Um, the participants, I really want to thank all of you for, for today. Um, as, as we said earlier, uh, Wasanit Najisot, is organized by a, a range of partners, the Creative Economy Working Group, UNESCO, Alliance Francais, the Go Down Art Center, and Toyoza Communications. And this is part of a series of conversations driven by the uh, practitioners in the arts sector. Um, you know, they're the ones who are determining the, uh, the topics as well as the direction um, that will be, taking, will be taken in the, in the conversations. I know that the next um, session uh, will be on taxation, um, taxation in the creative sector. And we will be doing this in the next three weeks or so, uh, because taxation is such an important area of, um, of work for the, for the creative sector. Uh, how do we pay our taxes? Uh, should we pay taxes at all? Uh, how much should we actually be paying? And so forth and so on. Uh, to whom should we actually be paying? Um, so that will be the next point of um, conversation. Um, and 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 then we will also be asking uh, the uh, uh, participants to guide us on the consequent uh, topics 
that we shall have after October. Um, and, 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 and again, we'll be looking out to um, hear what, what, um, what uh, the practitioners would like to, to learn. Again, this is part of our professional development. It's part of um, really improving ourselves, getting to learn about our sector, um, you know, um, and, and as I think um, Liz and Kathy have said, uh, do read your contracts. Uh, and before you reach, you go to the lawyer, know what you really want um, uh, first, uh, you know, so that you, are, you know, you, you have have a starting point you know you you really should get an idea of what it is you really want and of course some some works as they have told us i work for pay and you get paid and you're happy and and you move with that uh, on your screen you have um a, a set of questions um um i think i, I may have jumped the gun uh, you have a set of questions of possible topics for the future uh, please do take two minutes uh, to choose the topic uh, that you would like covered in future Wasani Tunajisot sessions. I think we can do like one minute. Um, the first one is taxation in the creative sector. Uh, the second one is digital distribution of creative content. The third one is monetization of films online. Uh, the fourth one is maximizing, maximizing LinkedIn um, profile and the fifth is script writing techniques for short films. If you can take a minute to just select the topics that you think um, we should be able to cover uh, uh, in the consequent sessions, we'd really appreciate. So one minute, we just do it. And after you have selected, you submit. Yes, um, we have already started um, getting the analysis. I think the panelists also voted. Um, <clears throat> the top, the top, um, oops, I think someone just pulled it off my screen before I could read the analysis, but uh, clearly digital uh, platforms um, coming out very, very popular and taxation um, sequencing. So digital distribution of creative content, taxation scores at 81%, taxation in creative sector at 75%, monetization at 56%, maximizing LinkedIn at 44%, and script writing techniques for short films at 38%. Um, the conveners will, um, will make a decision on whether to go with taxation first or to go with digitization first. Uh, but clearly, those two are critically important and we'll be able to um, communicate with you in the next few days. So see you in three weeks time. Again, thank you so much, Liz Lenjo. Thank you very much, Kathy. And thanks a lot to the partners. Was a need to We are not waiting for people to sort us out. We are sorting ourselves. <laughs>